Hello and welcome to this product update from Bowers. Many of you will be aware of the difficulties in measuring small diameters, often reverting to the use of pin gauges to try and check whether the, this small diameter is within tolerance. Obviously, this doesn't tell us anything about the form of that diameter or indeed its size, simply that it's at least as big as the size of the pin we were able to push into it. Often, a larger pin is used to check that the hole isn't too big. This time-consuming method um, requires a large quantity of pin gauges, all of which that need to be kept in calibration and need to be replaced as they wear out. At Bowers, we've solved this problem and we've helped thousands of manufacturing companies move away from the need to manage drawers and drawers of pin gauge inventory, taking away the cost of recalibration and replacement gauges year on year. The micro gauge is a digital pen style display which is designed to work with a range of heads to measure bores from one millimetre through to ten. In inches that's as little as 37 and a half thou right through to 407 thousandths of an inch. The resolution is a micron or 50 millionths in, in inches and the gauge is, in, is available individually or in a set form as we have here. The set contains all of the heads and setting rings required to cover a range and I'm featuring here the set that covers from 1.5 millimetres to 4.25. So setting is easy. I'm just going to select the head that I want to use. This is a 2.25 millimeter head with the cone inserted. Just going to assemble that on. Lock that into position. And I'm going to use the depth stop that's supplied with the gauge to ensure that I get a nice square entry onto the setting ring. Here's my setting ring as part of the kit, 2.252 millimetres. I've already preset that size into the gauge's memory, so I'm gonna hit set and set that to 2.52. Let's do that again, there we are. And you can see we've got an incredibly repeatable um, measurement gauge. So, for bores which are machined square to a face, we can use the depth stop that's supplied in the set to um, act as a, a square registration so that the gauge is nicely squared up and we get a, a very repeatable reading. However, if the bore has been machined from an angled face or from uh, a diameter, then we're going to need to use the diameter mode within the gauge itself. So let me just show you that. If we hold mode down, we can see we've gone into diet, dynamic mode. And if I scroll through the options here, I can come to diameter. So I'm going to uh, select diameter. And what that does is tells the gauge that you want to freeze the display at the smallest value as you roll through the diameter. So I'm going to enter the probe head into the ball, reset the gauge, sweep through, there is my diameter. We would send that using the data function, the data send function. So the diameter mode allows us to sweep through and takes the skill, skill of the operator requirement away and gives us a very repeatable result. As you noticed, when I went into dynamic mode, there were other options, min, max, and there's even a TIR function. Total indicator reading means if we were to say insert that probe into a bore, reset and then rotate the bore or rotate the gauge, we would be able to display the max minus min reading and give us an indication of form error or um, in this case with two point ovality. So we're measuring diameters and we're, we're putting a real size to this rather than saying it's simply between X diameter, X pin diameter and Y pin diameter. So use this data, um, this real size data, to understand the process capability um, by storing results and using the data transfer button, as we said earlier. 
Micro gauge as a display unit is also compatible with other styles of head. This is the split probe head. We can also, for high volume applications, remove the split probe head and up to a, um, around 20 millimeters. This controller is also compatible with a smart plug electronic plug gauge style head. So if I screw that one on there, this is a smart plug head, standard head, but this head is um, designed to, um, to measure high volume components of components and is, is made to a dedicated size. So the diameter of the plug is machined um, to be just below the bottom limit of the bore you want to measure. And then we've got two points in this case, which transfer into a reading. So I'm going to set this back to normal mode. I don't need dynamic for this. Normal, there we go. And you can see now, I could set this in a, in a gauge. Let's, let's just simulate that and say that's five millimeters. And you can see now that with no skill at all, I can put this in and out of the hole and I'm getting easily one micron repeatability even if the bore is not square to a face because the diameter of the plug itself is aligning the bore. That's, that's doing the, the work for me. For batch inspection of um, components which lend themselves to um, a table, we've got a setup here which is um, the micro gauge comparator stand. What we've got here is a floating table. So this table is, is allowed to float in that horizontal XY plane and the surface of the of the table stays perpendicular to the axis of the gauge. So what that allows us to do is raise and lower the table maintaining this perpendicularity. So if I put a part on there we would allow the, the, uh, the table to align the part and guide the gauge into the bore. So there is no skill required here. I can take the, this component off, bring the next one in and allow the gauge to align itself. Obviously we've got adjustment here and we can set stops so that the operator comes down to a fixed stop and doesn't crash the probe into the table. So for large batch um, or repetitive measurement we can even sort of automate this process using the same micro gauge um, head, but with an adapter here, I've, I've um, used one of the standard Bowers indicators because as I'm sat in front of that comparator and operating it, I want to be able to see the display horizontally. So, if you're using pin gauges, or for that matter, any other go, no go style, uh, attribute style gauging, then take a moment to calculate the cost of managing that inventory, keeping it in calibration, replacing it as it wears out, and then give Bowers a call and let's see if we can show you how quickly something like this system will pay back. Thanks for watching.